What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another day of First Blood and another episode. It's a beautiful Saturday. It's a beautiful day for Call of Duty, and I'm here with my my co-host, Alan. How you doing, man? How's everything going? You just reminded me. You said it's it's a beautiful day. I'm sitting here looking outside and realizing I could have the windows open, so I just had to open my window <laughs> a little bit because it really is a beautiful day outside today. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing pretty good there, Mr. Jerry Berry. So uh, I'm pumped, dude. These games today I think are going to provide some really interesting conversations compared to even the ones yesterday. So I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> it's getting saucy out here. Just the week before major, like it's getting it's getting super saucy. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I think it gets to the point where it's like, all right, this is business time. Whether you're having a rough patch through the league. It's it's like you want to get a win under your belt, get that confidence going, um, going into the major and, and the big tournament. Obviously, all 12 teams will go to that major, but still want to get the win under the belt, get that confidence back going into land for sure. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So am I. Um, so I don't. did you want to talk about the thing you just told me about a little oh, bit yeah, further? Or do, that, do you want to yeah, do, that? do that? Or, no, go for it. Yeah, so for anyone out there that may be going to Minnesota or is close by to the major that doesn't have tickets, I have one four day vip pass that i need to give away because i'm not going to be in minnesota this weekend so I, i'm just going to put the link to the tweet in, in the chat real quick if you go to that tweet fill up you know do the things follow me follow minnesota follow jerry as well if you don't already do that i'm sure you do if you're already here and then leave one comment to say why you should get a four day vip pass i'll be choosing the winner i don't know at the end of the show we'll just say that much there sometime, you go. Sometime today, it'll be chosen. Alan's we'll a goat. It. Alan's a goat. <laughs> I gotta give it away, man. I feel bad. Like it just, it's just sitting on my hands. It's just like, what do I do with this? Because I can't go. So, well, someone's someone's got to get that VIP experience. If it's not me, you guys heard him. Go show some love on the tweet and go do all the things necessary. If you want a free free entry into to the Minnesota weekend, it's gonna be a fun time. I guarantee it's gonna be a crazy event too. I was talking to Tatch yesterday. He was like, "This is gonna be a nuts event." Like I saw their tweets saying that oh, two of the days cool. were sold out. Uh, obviously, we've seen like the Minnesota watch parties and all that too. So I don't think it's something that if you're around the area, you're definitely gonna want to be there. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm I'm pumped, man. I mean, if you didn't go to the launch weekend during the Modern Warfare year, like the way that they set up the venue was unbelievably cool super super dope they had like the minnesota um vikings drumline come in they had like some people from the timberwolves doing stuff it, it was it was sick man they know how to do events so yeah they're gonna run it the right way for sure for sure uh well let's go ahead and hop straight into to the day one recap and kind of talk about all the matches yesterday um i know there was a lot of craziness going on and some of our predictions <laughs> went south but uh overall it was a really good day at call of duty i think it was a very competitive day to say the least um other than maybe the last match but overall i think all the teams played good um uh, very competitive day of call of duty like i was saying um but to start things off with to talk about uh yesterday's matches was the first match of the day it was paris legion going up against toronto ultra Holy. and this was a crazy one man it really was um i think a lot of teams were kind of like Wondering if, if, or not teams, but fans and players and stuff, wondering if Paris Legion could finally put it together. Uh, we've kind of talked about Jimbo a lot on this roster. Um, like we saw him basically in the last three matches. Like the first match was like, okay, look, this guy, can he compete in the league? Can he do his thing? You know, everyone was saying he's a great player. To the second match, he picked it up. He started playing a lot better, looked a little bit more comfortable. They were still falling short. And then yesterday, I feel like he puts the full thing together. He drops over a one KD and the kid was making unbelievable plays. I saw a bunch of Wimbo spams in the chat. Like, I don't know. The, <laughs> I think the, the after watching him more, the way he does play, like it is going to like tend to, you're going to be prone to having a, like a worse game here and there. But overall, like when he's on, like this team's going to be dominating and like the plays he was making. Um, I know you said you didn't get to catch all of it, but like some of the plays he was making in search and show is unbelievable. Like this guy has, I don't know. I like to say balls of steel. Like this guy literally just runs around, hits like crazy lanes and makes insane plays that I felt like Toronto was like, whoa, what is this guy even doing at certain times? But Paris put it together, man. They look good. Yeah, I think you're going to really start to see as Jimbo and John get more comfortable together. I think you're really going to see Jimbo get into his own where it comes to his playlistic style, where it's a lot of let's get forward let's take away space let me challenge somebody who may not expect me um you know watching him play through challengers you saw that all the time especially on maps like bakaj by the way for what it's worth and obviously having that played twice in that series like if jimbo can be a pest and get around the back of people hit from different angles you don't expect 
get in towards that main granny's house on surge like he's a problem and you have to be able to deal with it and i don't it didn't really look like at any point toronto really had an answer for it i mean it's it's unfortunate i know like Bant's not feeling well how much of that plays into his personal performance um obviously not the greatest series that we've seen from him overall but i'm telling you this jimbo kid if he can figure it out he's going to be a problem for a lot of teams and we're seeing that now even for a team that i think we both probably largely consider to be a top four team in the league right now so well maybe not anymore but <laughs> at least before this matchup <laughs> yeah no i agree i want to i don't know if you saw this tweet too i wanted to bring this up to you um but carson the guy who does the stats for for uh the cdl right now he tweeted yesterday can we stop pretending this toronto it, team yeah. is the same as last year <laughs> they're 10th in hard hardpoint win percentage 10th in S and D round win percentage, then fifth in control round win percentage, and they're 10th overall KD. Have to be able to slay in a game like Vanguard. So I'm curious to kind of see, like, I don't know, I guess what your thoughts are on this. Like we've talked about Toronto a lot, right? Like we even had good conversations with Bant, and it's like these guys got top four at the major. Uh, you know, realistically, they played, I don't know, some of the better teams, but they couldn't win a hard point. They went 0-8 there. They still finished top four. Then they come back home. We talked to Bant. He says like practice is going better. Uh, their hard point yeah. woes are getting, you know, more ironed out. And then you see them, I think what, in the first match they took down Minnesota and they won both those hard points. And we we're like, oh, cool. Everything's fixed. And then you go into the Boston breach choke and you go getting a hundred point club in the Kavutu that we talked about. And then you go on to play phase. We talked about the vetoes. Uh, we were like, what maps are they going to play them mm -hmm. on? Whatever. The hard point was continue. And then it's like, here we are again. We see them yesterday. Like, yeah, I know it sucks for them. Cause like, like we said, Kleenex had like COVID uh, one of the weekends, uh, then Bance just had it. It's like, I don't know where you weigh, like being sick sucks. I got to say it. it sucks playing Call of Duty, but is it like, is it perform? Is it that much of a performance thing where they aren't getting these wins and that's what you're going to chalk it up to? Or is it the team actually internally struggling, like struggling and not being able to figure it out in this game? I think it's, why not both? <laughs> it's kind of where my mind is going. Yeah. I, Cause th there are, there have been so many tight maps, like, mm -hmm missing out on the tuscan hardpoint by two points now granted that's to a paris team you should be beating that paris team but tuscan has not been historically their most comfortable hardpoint so i still want to say that this team is still a solid team mm -hmm. but it's hard to really make an argument for it with as you'd mentioned you don't win a single hardpoint at land on major you only have won two hard points so far in I don't it, it it's hard to pick out a map set right now for this team it's like oh if they find this in the rotation this should be a win like there nothing is a guaranteed win right now for for this Toronto team maybe outside of the Gavudu control that may be about it because that's the other thing is like their control has been really good lately mm -hmm. like man it's hard it's really difficult for me to put like a selling point on this Toronto team but there's just something about watching them play that I still don't like. I'm not like hitting the panic button like I do with other teams that we've seen over the course of the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I think I'm right there with you. I think they people argue like, oh, Toronto isn't the, the Toronto team that they were last year. But I think they've had some some asterisks to the last few weeks of their gameplay just simply from players being sick and not feeling 100 percent. I'm curious to see kind of like we talked about yesterday, even how it unfolds for them over this next weekend. I hope Vance gets better. I hope he's able to compete at the land and then we can kind of see Toronto at 100% full form and see what these guys can do. Cause I don't yeah. know, man, it's not, it's not fun when you get into like a spiral effect as a team, um, whether it's stuff like that and you're just having problem after problem after problem. Cause realistically, like, I don't know, that's stuff that's out of their control in a way, but at the same time, it's like, it starts adding up losing, like whether you're sick or not, right. it's like, it's just not a fun time. So Hopefully those guys can turn it around. Overall, though, I think Paris have, have continued to impress other than outside of that. Who did they lose to? Was it Minnesota? I, that was the only match that they won. They lost to Boston, Atlanta, and Paris in the last three. Boston, okay. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I think Paris hopefully can continue to, I don't know, impress, I guess, a little bit. They finally got their second one under their belt. So hopefully they can go to land, get the confidence going, and uh, kind of take this team to the next level. I'd love to see those guys. I, I don't know. I've talked about it to you before a little bit, but it's like, it's not fun going on those losing screws. You know what I mean? For five, six and games. Like, show up to land. <laughs> yeah. For, for like the mental, yeah. even like side of COD, like it can, it just can put you down a spiral that you don't want to go on. So I hope that uh, these guys can keep trying. I know Temp has been playing unreal. We talk about this guy all the time. Dude, like Temp's so good, even bro. just looking at the stats from yesterday, this guy dropped a 1.21 yesterday, 104 kills in the series. Like plus 18. I don't know. He's just, he's in his element for sure. So good to see out of those guys, but 
I uh, I was thoroughly impressed to see them kind of take this match uh, all the way to map five and, and secure the dub on the boat cage. We've seen them go map five on that map, two other series, and it didn't look good. So they finally got the win. Maybe the bomb site changes what they needed. <laughs> yeah, it, it's two good showings in search and, and two good closeouts on hard point. I think that's the best way to kind of look at it from Paris Legion's standpoint is that you improved in both departments pretty considerably. And the fact that you're able to ice up and close out both those hard points is good news. Now we just got to figure out the control and uh, we could have a dangerous team on our hands. Yep, I agree. I mean, Temp even said yesterday in the interview, now that you mentioned it, it's like, he was like, yeah, we, we realized like map two was an absolute toss. I know you didn't get to watch it. You have to watch it back, but it was insane. Like they, they realistically should have won this series three to one um, and, and Paris oh, should have handled business. It, the Berlin search. Uh, it, yeah, the Berlin SND, it was nuts. So it's like they could have easily closed it out uh, and, and won that series. They absolutely tossed it and their decision-making round 11 was questionable for sure. And he even said in the interview, he's like, that's one of those maps you can't choke. He was like, I told my team, he's like, we're supposed to laugh it off, but you're sitting there after map four and you're like, well, this series should be over now. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I think they'll definitely bite themselves on that. But like I said, overall, Paris, they look better. Toronto, they got to they gotta figure it out going into the major, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely do. I mean, you've got one more match for, um, new, for Toronto against New York. Um, and I mean... It should be a W, um, but I don't know. I feel like everything's kind of a mystery. I, I, I heard, uh, I think it was Miles and Chance yesterday that were talking about it. They're talking about, like, dude, the middle of the pack right now is just impossible to predict. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. Someone's got to stand out, though, because we still have a couple more spots for the uh, upper bracket that are yet to be determined. Now that um, LAG, were, I know we'll talk about here in a second, now that they've won, they've secured themselves upper bracket. So you've got five teams battling for those uh, last three upper bracket spots. Yep, definitely, definitely. I mean, that's my final thoughts on those two teams, unless you got anything else, but I think kind of hinted at it. Uh, excited to see what both the teams can continue to do, um, and that'll transition us into our second match of the day yesterday, which was, who was it, LAG versus LA. LAT. And this was nothing short of an absolute banger. I loved watching this series, like all the way to map oh. five. You know, I feel like it was kind of like, I talked about it a little bit yesterday. I know you did, but like, I don't know. It, it was just reminded me of like a, it was like a grudge match. Like it was just like a back and forth. <laughs> like, I don't know. You wanted to win so bad. It was funny. Slasher came into my stream this morning before we actually went live with this. And he was like, he said, come on, Jerry. I was like, what? He said, I saw who you voted for yesterday. Cause like on the GG breaking point pickums, oh, he was like, I saw yeah. who you picked. He goes, you, he said, history should have repeated itself by now. You should know better or something like that. Cause it, it, historically <laughs> speaking, when Slasher and Octane have played each other, Slasher's gotten the, the head to head on him over time. So he was like, you should have known better voting on That's the other crazy. team. So that made me laugh. But this series was insane, dude. Like it really was. I think we finally got to see like LAG kind of like in their element in a way. And I, I got to just talk about it, bro. Asim is an absolute He's, beast, dude. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the funny thing about it was when Clay took that mental break last year, how much of that pressure moved immediately to Asim to kind of step up and be a leader. Mm -hmm. And he provided, dude. Like, we got to stop thinking about Asim from BO4 Modern Warfare, dude. This guy is the future. Like, mm -hmm. he's so talented. And I think the biggest thing about it is it's not only individually has he gotten not just to be incredible, but he's consistently incredible. You have to think that he's actually providing a lot of the kind of calling between him and Huke as well. When they're trying to go and, you know, like, um, you know, Colt was saying yesterday, they want to play with speed. They want to get in your face. You have to know that Asim is probably one of those two mm -hmm. that are really being vocal about how, when, and where are we going to be able to do that. So, man, yeah, impressive series from Asim. Really impressive series for everybody from LAG yesterday, um, even in the close matches that didn't quite go their way. Uh, big stuff coming out of them, and that's super exciting, especially with how they were able to clutch up again both of those respawns again so um both the hard points rather so that's great news for these guys yeah no i completely agree i think if you're an lag fan it's so good to see you can tell like their practice and work they've been putting in behind the scenes has really been paying off all these guys were on point yesterday literally top to bottom like slasher looked good everyone had been talking about him like oh he needs to pick it up whatever whatever he looked great gunless guy was insane i remember one of the rounds on the desert siege SND, he literally screamed at the top of his lungs when he killed Envoy in a one boy in a one v one. So you could love to see that if you're a Pierce fan, because when that guy's feeling himself, and I've I've teamed with him when he's in MVP form, and that guy's untradeable. And then Cuke looked good as well. So so shout out to all those guys. I want to talk a little bit too uh, about LA Thieves, like on the side of them, like Man. it's it's getting to the point now where it's getting questionable right i know uh aches always jokes around and i saw some people in the chat already say blow it up um that's his thing but like 
I don't know. It, it's just weird to me, right? Like we we talked so highly of them early on. Uh, realistically, like in major one when they went on that losers run, I I thought these guys were so good, right? And then through these like second yeah. set of qualifiers. It's just ever since they lost 3-0 to London with Paul X, it's been downhill. Like it just hasn't looked good. Like no matter what the series is. And like, even in this series, like we, we talk about their hard point. Like I was telling you, like they're 20, we're, what are they? 20 and six or something stupid. It was like crazy. Yep. And I was just like, they lose both hard points in this series. Um, but what, like what really worries me for these guys is like the individual performances. And I'm, I'm not a big guy on that. Like I usually am one, like you got to figure it out team wise, but like, I feel like we've been seeing some lackluster performances from multiple people on this roster. Agreed. And the only guy who's consistently been really good for this team, in my opinion, is Kenny. Same. No, a hard agree. I, 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 that's the only person that I really feel confident is going to come through and give you a consistent performance. And the weird thing about all the conversation points, as much as we can look at some really staggering KDs across the last couple of weeks and in individual performances from the Thieves, none of their losses on individual maps have really been terribly bad. You've got 100-point club and two different 6-1 search losses. Everything else has been like a 200 plus to 250 hard point, and their search and destroy losses for the most part have only been one round 11 and one round 10. So like they're in all of these series with these bad performance still like irking them. So it's man, it's tough. It's super tough to kind of pick a poison here because in some of the maps where you get a clutch up for the thieves they win a close map it's like he, there's draza who was there performing well um in others it's like well draza pulled like a point six. so it's like it's really tough i would say to pick out what exactly is going wrong with the thieves is it a play style thing it, are we seeing kind of some dramatic kind of fall offs from the ars i think in particular you look at um because even envoy has been fine he hasn't been a, a problem spot comparatively to the poor performances and times that we've seen out of like Draza, for instance, in the last couple of weeks, it's just hard to pinpoint. Like, is it just that the ARs are not playing well, or mm. do you need to start to see something more synergistic between what Envoy and Kenny are doing versus what the backline wants to do? Yeah, I, I definitely want to talk about this too. It's something I had a conversation with Enable yesterday. He was saying, I want to get your thoughts on this too. He was saying he thinks for this team they should switch Draza to the flex and put Ken as a sub with Envoy. I don't know if that would necessarily save like you know their issues, but I wonder. He's just a big fan of Kenny on the sub, which I am too. I think Kenny, yeah. when he was running a sub in his career, like he's just so impactful. And like realistically in COD, like the sub players are the guys who make all the plays and open up the map for the ARs. And they, they have a bigger right. impact on the game. If you have a submachine gun front, it's way better than an AR front, in my opinion, over playing yeah. um, the last few years. And you know, Draza does have a pretty big history of being able to run more of the AR flex more than just being, you know, like a true flex or running that 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 extra sub. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that it's worth a go. You know, it, it does, you know, it doesn't hurt to make that little roll swap because I think play style and tempo wise, we do need to see more speed out of Draza. I feel like he's just left in the dust and a lot of these hard points just by overall total engagements that he's pulling, even in games that he's doing fine in. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's just not getting the same kind of an impact as a lot of the other players on the roster are so uh, i don't know I, I think it's interesting because i think you have pop-off potential for kenny in a multitude of ways it mm -hmm. just i think comes down to what is he most comfortable with and maybe at a certain point if he's feeling 50 50 then you have to ask the question to draws like dude what do you want to do because at the moment it's not really hanging in this this, this second stage at the moment for him yeah i just remember it reminds me of cold war like when he was running that sub for a long time and then he switched to the ar and then he switched back to the sub yeah. and joined the thieves he's like he can run both of the roles i just wonder if maybe there's stuff going on on the backside that obviously we don't know and don't get to watch every day in scrims if it would maybe help or fix some of their issues. But I don't know. The biggest thing for me, and like I've teamed with this guy for a long time is Octane, right? Like I want to see him get his confidence back um, on this team and and really start to perform. And I know he can. I just think yesterday, that may have been one of the worst series I've ever seen him play individually. Uh, the guy went 68 and 105. And I know it's, like I said, I'm not always a guy on stats, but that to me says like he's never right. getting put in comfortable situations in some of these maps and modes. And that can be a big issue um, when it just comes down to overall play and just overall like confidence. Like you, when you got a player like him, he pops a two or three piece, that guy's going to be feeling himself for the rest of the game. It's like, I don't know. I, I, I just, I've seen Sam be like so dominant in his career. Like going back to, like I said, when I team with him, like this guy was literally the untradeable, unkillable, like just beast. And it's like, I don't know. I, I want to see him get back into form. I know he can do it, and uh, I know he's been catching a lot of flack, but I think I think overall, hopefully, we won't see that inconsistency out of him uh, once this team puts it together. I'm, 
I'm curious here. I'm going to do a little breaking point stats poll to see if I can find out what are exactly. Okay, so in stage two qualifiers, mm-hmm. Draza's got an overall 0.73 KD. Control, it's 0.54. Brother. That's What's their that's control? Right? They haven't won a control, right? Or have they? they was their first won, win yesterday? They won, they, yeah, their first one was yesterday. Okay. But 0.54 in control. That's not good. No. And then the next lowest for the team is Octane. He's at a 0.92, which is not bad, but not good. The, the median mark looks like it's just over a 1.0102, something like that. So that's crazy, man. 0.54 in control. Like, at a certain point, you have to be looking at just the map and how you're playing it and being like, all right, well, this clearly isn't working. I don't know, man. It's, it's tough. That's, wow. I that's feel like, too, I, I don't know. Like, I, I wouldn't even mind them... Like, in other CODs, it's, like, a big deal to, like, switch your roles. But in this one, like, I feel like it's not that crazy to, like, change out on a few maps. Like, you're literally talking about, like, Bowcage, if you run two if you run two ARs or whether you run three subs, I'm not, they don't even play the map, so I don't think it even matters. But, like, say you run three subs on that map, it doesn't matter for that map at all. Like, if Ken was running a sub. Tuscan, if you run two ARs, which most teams, teams do, I guess it would change for that. So, Ken would need to run a sub there. Gavutu is three ARs, so it doesn't change there at all. Then Berlin, they would just flip flop. And then the controls, it's like you realistically run three ARs on Gavutu, which Draza runs an AR anyways. And then they right, would switch exactly. on Tuscan. It's like, so it, I feel like it wouldn't change their core okay. that much. It would be like a couple maps that they're flip flopping out. I mean, it would be worth a try. Yeah. Like you said, a 0. 0.5 in control is obviously not the best. And it's they, they switch it. I mean, you might as well, if you're not finding success yeah. on it, see, or at least just mess around with it in practice and see maybe, maybe mm-hmm. they have and we don't know on the backside of things. Um, but I agree. I mean, they just got to. They got to figure it out, though. They've been a, down a, a spiral through these qualifiers, and I'm sure that they'll stick it out through the major and whatnot. But you know how it goes with some of these bigger organizations um, when they're yeah. not finding success and, and they built a roster to try and succeed. It's like you start thinking roster changes and stuff starting to, to kind of play a role in the backfield. So I don't know. I'm interested to see how, how they do. Do they play? Are they done or do they have one more match? They have one more match, right? Or no? Is that it? Oh yeah, no, yeah. They play today. Play they play today. today. Yeah, so they play a first match. Teams. This is gonna be like a a really big match for either of these teams. Like to kind of we'll talk about it in a little bit to see what they can kind of do. But I mean, if you saw a thieves loss today here going into the major starting and losers potential round one exit, yeah. that's where things get very interesting. Um, so I don't know. I. I'm interested to see, like I said, what happens with these guys. But overall, LEG look a lot better, and the thieves the thieves woes continue for me. Ben called this matchup the blow up bowl. <laughs> that's actually comedy. Oh man, that's good. Thanks for the laugh. Some of this, some of that is that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh man. Oh, well, that I don't know if you have anything else on these guys. So. <laughs> I'm good on it. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah, I think, like I said, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, but then. That's it for that match, and that'll transition transition us into the last match of the day from yesterday. Um, it was Atlanta Phase going up versus Florida Mutineers. This one was kind of as expected, yeah. honestly. I, I didn't yeah. expect it to, to go any other way, to be honest. I feel like both of us predicted yesterday 3-1 to Atlanta, um, and I feel like they realistically handled business pretty convincingly, in my opinion, across the board. I mean, the first map wasn't really close at all. It was at points and times, but the overall score is 250-165. to 165. Uh, Florida went on to, to handle business in the search and destroy. Then kind of phase just handled business, I think, the rest of the series. A 3-1 in control, uh, yep. then a 250 to 200 hard point. I mean, we did read this one as far as what maps we were going to expect, right? Mm-hmm. And the question at the first place is, like, if you're Florida, you obviously have played a lot of Bacage. and I mean, they've played it in almost every single series. But when you keep that map in against Atlanta or or Optic, like you're going to have to play a very different style of game. Mm-hmm. Like it's tough because Florida, I think the way I look at them on that map is they literally saw what Atlanta did and said, "Let's replicate that," and that means that now all of a sudden you have to beat Atlanta at their own game 
in a way that they innovated how the played map like that's not good news <laughs> if you're anybody um let alone a florida team that still is kind of a bit of miss when it comes to what they want to do on hard point outside of Bacaj. so then you have to also play them on voodoo that's bad news yeah I, I just think the map pool is never in florida's favor and that's a problem by the way like if you think longevity you cannot get through this season by just playing Bacaj hard point yeah. Like you have to start opening up your map pool if you're Florida. Otherwise, you're going to be in this really dangerous position of being way predictable because you hard veto out Gavudu. You're hard vetoing out Berlin on the hard point, um, Gavudu on the control. Like You have to expand your map pool. You cannot just play the same map over and over again. Yeah, and that'll lead us to, to the discussion later too with the Boston Breach match later today that they'll go up against. I'm so curious to see kind of what Boston does on that side, because it's like, I know Florida's good at, t like, they like to play Tuscan, but they like to play Bocage. I'm curious which map yeah. they'll get out later on, but I don't know. Overall, the, the Florida team, like, I think we'll really get an understanding later today of where they kind of lie in the st uh, standings for me. Like, it'll be a battle of, like, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, something like that. You'll you'll have an understanding yep. of where these teams are, are at in the standings for me, because I think... We've talked about it a good amount. Like Florida, they can go out and beat the better teams, but they can also lose to to some of the lesser teams. So uh, FaZe continue to handle business. They've lost back-to-back -back versus FaZe and now Optic. Um, and I would say the series have been competitive, but overall I think the better teams kind of handle business for me. And Agreed. Impressive stuff out of FaZe again. I think these guys have been looking a lot better across the board. I feel like they're kind of getting a good understanding of what maps they like to play and, and figuring out their roles there. Um, so... I don't know. I'm a fan of the FaZe boys right now. I think it's going to make for a fun major. I can't wait to see hopefully another Optic and FaZe battle later on, but we will. We'll see it last the uh, we'll see it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it on land with the fans, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Greedy. No, it's true though. True. I think it'll make it fun, but uh I'm down to to kind of transition things into today's matches unless you got anything else on these guys. I I think like I said yesterday today. No, I'm uh, ready to dig on it, man. Going to be I some bangers today. There's some good convo points about the games today, so I'm oh yeah, I'm ready to get into it. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Let me turn you up. I see someone in chat. There we go. I got it. It's on the wrong PC, Ryan. Appreciate you. Um, okay, then let's talk about the matches today. Sorry about that. Um, going up first today will be <laughs> the battle of blowing it up. Apparently, according to Ben, blow up bowl. This is the <laughs> that is really funny. You got Seattle Surge going up against LA Thieves and. I honestly can't wait to watch this match. <laughs> Me too. I think uh, it's gonna be really good. Like I, I really think Ben kind of hit it. Like it, it really is like a win for either team needs to come out with a win, right? We got Seattle. We've mm -hmm. talked about their struggles. Uh, will the struggles continue? And they're playing a team that has been struggling for a long time as well. Like LA Thieves have not looked good so far uh, this season. They're coming off a, a three-two loss yesterday versus LAG. Um, then going into the major, they're playing, a, like I said, a Seattle team that has continued to struggle but has looked good versus the top team. So I'm curious to see if, if Seattle can handle business here and if like we're going to see a Sib Pred takeover or or if LA Thieves is like, okay, now we got nothing to lose. We're starting losers no matter what. Let's kick up and fry. The, the element that you said that I think is actually going to be the X factor of this matchup is Sib and Pred against the speed and play style of LA Thieves. Mm -hmm. I don't love what we've seen out of the Thieves to be able to match tempo. I mean, we just came off seeing it from a Seaman Hook. Mm -hmm. So I have a big worry here that for LA Thieves, you're not going to have enough of a turnaround to be prepped for a Seattle team that is likely going to want to play you on different maps than you played yesterday. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, maybe, I don't know. It's hard to say like they very well may keep the Tuscan. And it's just hard because Tuscan's change with the hard point spawns, I think has seen certain teams prefer it and other teams still lost on it. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't love the idea of how these teams match up when you think of this from thieves point of view, just by speed and tempo. I think if Pred can get active and Mac is right there with them as he largely has been throughout this stage, the slate potential that Seattle brings on fast maps could put Thieves in a bit of a blunder. So I'm I'm curious, I think, just to see what the map pools will look like and if there is going to be any sort of a stylistic change for Thieves because I think there needs to be one. I completely agree with you, man. I, I think the biggest thing for, for me is, like, a lot of these teams are good Bocage teams, and, like, LA Thieves, we don't see them play it, like, hardly ever. So going into a series versus them when you're playing Vitos, it's like, I talk about it all the time, it's like that... The big D energy, like these guys literally know 
that LA Thieves are going to get rid of Bokaj like right off the bat. So then you kind of just, if you're a Surge, you just get to pick the maps that you want to play. Do you square up on Gavutu exactly. or do you just get rid of it, right? And then it's like, if LA Thieves want to do something weird in the videos, they're plenty fine with playing them on Bokaj. But like we saw Seattle play against Optic on that map. We've seen them play against FaZe and some of the better teams on it. I think LA Thieves are instantly going to get rid of that map. Um, but then it's going to be a battle of kind of what Seattle wants to do from there. Then the coin toss will depend on what control we will get. But I don't know. I'm scared if I'm an LA Thieves fan right now. I think this is a series that isn't going to be just a blow over like bounce back series. You're playing a hungry Seattle team that they know like this is life on the line type stuff. Like we're talking <laughs> roster real. changes Real realistically for both teams here. But it's like I think more on Seattle side than on the Thieves side, in my opinion, like they haven't looked great. Um, and, and they're really playing for their spot at this point. And I think they've looked good in search and destroy. Uh, they get to dictate the hard points here in, in this series. And uh, I'll be interested to see what control we'll get. But I think, I don't know, man, Seattle, I think they're going to come out hungry. I'm a big fan of Sib in this series. I think he's going to look good. I think for Seattle, on the low key, I think you're hoping that you don't see any Gavudu in the series. Mm -hmm. just, just get more subs in hand because you're getting a huge struggle out of Draza right now. And when Octane's running like a solo AR on some of these maps, it seems like he does not really find the same kind of value as other main ARs right now. So I think if you're looking at this from Seattle, I think you're hoping for Bakaj Tuscan on probably both modes um, in some regard. And then if you get the coin flip, I think you veto out Gavudu control and you play Tuscan control. I, I think you just want to keep this in, in close quarters as much as humanly possible. It could be a tight series. It really well could. I think if you go to like bigger maps, if you do see things like Gavudu's in the mix, I don't really love the idea of Seattle playing up against Thieves on Gavudu. I mean, they're 0-4 in the map when it comes to Hardpoint in particular, even though there have been some tight losses. They've tried to square up against other fast-paced teams when they play Gavudu, and they still lose it. So... I don't love the idea of them playing Gavudu. I don't love the idea of Thieves playing Bakaj. So I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm curious. I, I, even if it's a Berlin Tuscan, I could actually see Seattle still winning both hard points. Yeah, I, I think I'm right there with you. I, I completely agree. I hope that they do get rid of Gavutu hard point, uh, then just assume that Thieves is going to get rid of the Bakaj. So curious to see what maps we get. Um, but like I said, I think this is, or like Ben said, I should say, this is the blow up bowl. Blow up bowl. This is going to be hilarious. interesting to see what happens uh, from, from this is going to be the last series from both of these teams before they go into the major. So they're kind of going to sit on this L. Uh, one of these teams is and going into the major, see what they can do. I think they're both guaranteed losers. No, Seattle's still in the mix. Seattle, okay. They, okay, they so, would have to, they would need some luck though. They would be at two and three with, um, they would need some teams to lose above them. Um, got it. But they, this is their last match of the quals. And Thieves would be guaranteed losers then, right? Yeah, because they haven't, they haven't won yet at yeah, this stage. That's so, yeah, what they're I guaranteed thought. loser. Yep. So, if yeah. Thieves were to win though, who, who would you think would be the guy th today if the Thieves were to win? Uh, for me individually, I think it's got to be. I want to see Octane like in in his element for me. I, I really think I know it's like people are probably gonna think the easy one on Draza, um, but I I think Octane like when he is feeling it and like very confident, it's like a easy. I don't know. I've just played with him when he's like so individually confident and like knows what's going on on the map, and it just makes everything so easy. Like he can have takeover mm -hmm. performances. We saw it at the kickoff. We've seen it um in this year so far in this title like when he's dominating it's like wow you're just sitting there like wow this is like a, a movie like it just looks really good so i don't know for for me i don't want to see a, a rough performance out of him anymore and i think uh he's the guy to kind of look at for for them to kind of take over and dominate for me how about you yeah i think that's probably what my pick would be as well um although i will say with you know how we're going to expect Pred and Mac to come today. I I actually do have a lot of focus on the Envoy today, mm -hmm. just due to the fact that you know I won't say that he's a slow SMG by any stretch of the imagination, but the pacing that he's going to have to find against Pred, who very regularly will make sure he's always away from his team. Like he goes rogue probably more than maybe most SMGs right now in respawn. Um, and if he gets around and you don't track him up and you don't find quick trades onto Pred. I think it could be a huge problem. I think Envoy's going to have to be the guy to do that. So uh, that's kind of where I'm looking. But I like the idea of that octane accuracy 1v1, especially in Surge. They're both actually really good Surge players right now in, in the league. So I'd be pumped to see that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm I'm really excited. And I think even just to talk real quick on the side of Seattle, like this player to watch for me is Sib too. Like I think he uh, he can have another yeah, dominant sure. series. Like he takes over this, this series in my opinion. So I, I don't know. It's going to be an absolute <laughs> battle. But unless you got any final thoughts, I'm ready to – Throw out some predictions, baby. 
Let's hit it, baby. Uh, I you know what I'm going. I'll, I'm going to keep it. I'm feeling saucy on this one. Go for I it. I think we're going to get... I, I I would actually love to see Surge come out and veto the Gavudu. Yeah, I know they hard veto mostly Berlin most of the time. Mm -hmm. But after your win versus Atlanta on that map earlier this stage, I think you leave Berlin in, force LA Thieves to have to ban Bocage, okay. and we get Berlin, Tuscan, hard points. And then search and destroy could be a, a bit of an interesting selection, but I, I don't think it matters. I think LA Thieves take the search, but I've got Seattle taking all three of the respawns. I've got this three to one Seattle. I like it. I like it. And honestly, after yesterday and the, the more I continue to watch the Thieves woe continue, I'm just not on board. But on the flip side, every time I go on Seattle here and, and try and give them the win, they always fall short for me. But I'm going to stick true to what I think. I think Seattle is going to take this series three to one as well. I think overall, they're just a better team. Like I said, I think uh, LA Thieves having an auto veto on hard point is just not a good look. And I think uh, that they're going to kind of continue to to get the map pool that they want. Um, I'm very confident in their search and destroy as well. I think the addition of equip has actually helped out. We've seen them clutch up some serious game fives. Um, and uh, they're, I think they're going to bounce back. So I got Seattle winning it three to one. I think they're going to handle business and, uh, Go ahead. Sam KP in chat says, Octane a good search player. Don't joke with that one. Homie's got a 1.6 this stage. He's been lighting it up in Search and Destroy. He's actually, I think he's got the top overall Search and Destroy KD right now, if I'm not mistaken. That's which is crazy to say. So there. I like it. Okay, okay, okay. It's it's back about the stats. Back about the stats. <laughs> 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 nah, but I don't know. This, this is the blow it up bowl, so I'm excited to watch this match and... and uh, See what team will be blowing it up. It's, it's not an easy sure. one either. Like it's gonna go into the major, like you said, that they potential losers bracket for for Seattle as well. So I don't know, losers bracket is gonna be crazy of this event. Um, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's the, gonna the, the be whole nuts. Thing's gonna be crazy, man. It really will be. Yep. I think a lot of these teams have picked it up where a, a lot of people didn't think that they would. Um, but that will. That's my kind of final thoughts on those guys. Unless you got anything else, I feel like we're kind of wrapped up with them. Oh, I'm um, good on that. Yeah. So match two of the day will, will be Boston Breach versus Florida Mutineers. And this is another banger of a series. This is like what we've been talking about a lot. We were excited for this matchup. Yeah. Uh, I think we mentioned it last weekend um, just to see kind of what Boston Breach really is. And when I've talked to some of the players on the team, um, they've said that they think this would be a harder matchup for them than London. Uh, they think that they match up well versus Florida, but Florida matches up really well versus them. And I agree with that completely. I think strictly off of maps, I'm so curious to see how the vetoes go here because you're playing two teams that love Bokash. And, and when I told you before, like I talked to the players and they're like, oh yeah, we're going to get rid of it. Now we've just seen them continue to play it versus every team. Uh, on the side of Florida, like we've talked about again, like they need to expand their map pool. They play this map every series and con teams continue to, to play it against them. But Florida seems to win it versus majority of the yeah. teams that aren't optic and phase. So yeah. I'm curious to see what route Boston goes here. Cause it's like, say you do get rid of Bokash. I feel like you're comfortable playing any of the other maps. We've heard Zenny say that they, they're they one of the best Berlin teams. We saw them play Gavutu versus Toronto and con like com confidently win the map. It was like 250 to 99 yep. or something like that. They were getting hype in the listener. Yep. Uh, then, like, I don't know. even like I, I just think they may be worried, though, to play Tuscan here. So I'm, see I'm curious to see like if they do. We saw at the Major, that was the map Awakening went, what, 37 and 13 or something. They barely lost the map. Um, and it's un unbelievable individual performance from him. So I don't know, like if you're Boston breach, I only put you in the GM. So what map are you getting rid of? You getting rid of Tuscan? You don't square up a Ford on it. Or are you going to just square up on Bocage and be comfortable with it or get rid of it? Like, I don't know what route you go here. You veto Bocage. If you're Boston, you win this series in four guaranteed. Okay. I, I just, there's, there's nowhere else that they could play. They don't play anywhere else, mm -hmm. bro. Like it's, it's, I, I think you just get rid of the Bocage and forced Florida to have to do something because there are combined one in four on the other maps outside of Bakaj. Like they're six and eight overall in hard point. And they've got one win on a map that is not Bakaj. Mm -hmm. Statistically, you make them play something else. Yeah. I, I, even if you feel okay with your Bakaj, this is a pretty solid matchup to where, I mean, for Boston, you are comfortably in, by the way, like you are in the upper bracket no matter what. So maybe there's an opportunity to kind of test out to see if your Bakaj will do well versus a team that actually kind of mains playing Bakaj. So maybe you keep it in just to try stuff out. But um, I think if you want to win the series here and guarantee yourself a high seed going into the playoff, I, I think you just veto Bakaj and just take your W. Yeah, I think I'm with you, honestly. I, 
I think you do make them play uncomfortable here. I'm just curious to see too, like how comfortable Boston feels on Tuscan with these new spawns. Like we saw Bance yesterday Fair tweet, time. like they literally lost the game on that P what was it? P three, I think. Um, okay. and he was literally like P three spawns, GG's like they just changed less than a week ago. Um, and a lot of these teams like aren't a fan. I know for sure on that fountain Hill, um, of how close the spawns can be from the front side of the Hill. So I'm curious to see if, if they, they will battle it out on the map, but overall, I'm excited for it, man. I, I think, uh, like I said, this is kind of like a deciding factor for me on where these guys lie in the standings. You've seen Florida come off of two L's now back to back versus phase and optic. Um, mm -hmm. and I think like we've talked about, those guys have continued to handle business. Um, but this is a good, this is a good kind of placing point for me. I will get to really see who, who this Boston breach team is. Um, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think the thing too, is as much as I can go out there and say like, you veto because you win the series. They still have like I still think that these two teams would match up fine on Bakaj, uh, especially coming off of you know some pretty poor individual performance from Florida yesterday. I think there's some vulnerabilities there that started to be showcased versus Atlanta. Granted, um, but I think the other thing on mind is just like it's not just the hard point that they kind of one track win on. You mm -hmm. also got to keep in mind that they want to play Tuscan Control. They don't really play Gavudu at all, mm -hmm. and I would be fine. I think if you're Boston getting that Gavudu in the mix, even though your win record, well, your win record and control overall is not very good, but especially on Gavudu, I think you try to square up with them on Gavudu. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, this is as much as Florida has looked good over the course of these qualifiers. Boston has looked better. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much where I hang my hat. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you 100%. I'm, I'm curious to see if Boston were to get this win, if they can close it out and go 5-0 and this stage, because that would be huge, right? That's a good confidence boost going it's into the major. Match. Their last match is London. London. And when I was talking Holy. to some of the players, they were saying that like they thought this match right here, Florida versus Boston, was going to be like the their hardest match. They thought like if they get this win under their belt, 4-0, and feeling really good going into Sunday, the last day of the qualifiers, like they thought they could handle business. So... I'm curious hmm. to see how it unfolds. It'll be crazy. It'll be crazy for sure. Um, but that, that'll lead me into predictions. I know which way I'm going Go with it. this one. Um, yeah, I think too. I think the series will be very competitive. I think it's going to be a, a back and forth series. But I I stay true to what we said. I think we're going to get Florida off of Bocage, uh, hopefully, on the Boston side of things. If they square up, it's fine. I mean, I think they, they're still a really good Bocage team. Uh, I'm going to go Boston Breach here, 3-1. to I think they're going to handle business. Show why they're the better team. I think Zinni's been in form. TJ continues to impress. And then obviously the rookies have both been frying. And uh, we've seen Nero yeah. really step up his game. I think just on the side of Florida. Um, I don't know. They're, they're close, but they're not close enough. That's kind of the way I'll put it. I like it. I, I think for me, it's kind of the same ballpark here. I think I'm, I'm thinking 3-1 I'm thinking Boston. If Bakaj is in the mix, I, I have it 3-2 Boston. I think Boston wins either way, though. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think it'll depend on the hard points for me too, but I, I think Boston will handle business, baby. We got to see what they're made of today, Alan. I said at the beginning of the stage, man, and it, it helped that I got their, their hoodie in right when the stage started. I was like, <laughs> I'm thinking Boston all stage, man. I don't know. There's something about them. They're improving at a very rapid rate. Like, I think that they have definitively put themselves out of the maybe top six conversation. And now with Toronto slipping, I think this team is very much so top four, if not maybe even better than that. And we'll see when they play London, I guess. But I'm pumped about this team. No, I completely agree. I think that brings up another interesting topic, too. It's like with as the year goes on, we've talked about it, like kind of the team start to iron out. And it's like for, for the top side of the things, it gets interesting, right? Like we're seeing now Toronto continue to struggle and we're seeing an LA Thieves right. struggle. And those guys are both above them. So it's like, I don't know, this is a good opportunity for Boston to kind of slide their way even in the overall standings and really make a run here at this major and continue to do so yeah. in these qualifiers. Um, but then our third match really of the day today will be uh, Optic Texas going up against the Los Angeles Gorillas. And I'm sorry, this match is going to stink. Well, you know, <laughs> you say that, and I, I think you're, you're, you're more prone to be right there. <laughs> However, think about some of the maps that we've been seeing LAG succeed on. I think if you get rid of the Bakaj hardpoint, which you better, I don't feel terrible about the other maps and the hard point that they may play. Fair. I, I, I really don't. Like, Optic, their worst hard point is Berlin. And I don't know. I, I, if, if we see Gavudu Tuscan, we know that Tuscan can be wild. And Gavudu is not exactly the most comfortable map for Optic either. So I think if a Seaman Hugh can continue to really kind of establish some dominance here, I think LAG could keep this pretty tight. I'm not going to lie. Okay. I also, see. you got to keep in mind that LAG, hey, 
you're expanding your map pool on the search too. So maybe there's an opportunity here for the gorillas to surprise. I don't know. Yeah, no, you're right. And I, I just saw someone in the chat. I wonder if Rambo or someone said this, but they said Optic already said they're going to try to expand their pool. Uh, so mm. I'm curious to see what maps get thrown out in this series uh, overall then. I, I don't know if they would be working on specific hard points or search and destroy if they just square up like you saw in like a Berlin and get more reps on it. Um, or if we see them kind of play a Desert Siege SND again, we know that didn't go well for them last time. But Shot, Shotzi was saying that they they are good at it in practice, but they just haven't transferred it over to, to some of these matches. So I don't know. It, it's going to be a, a banger series maybe, but I don't know. I, I've continued to say it uh, week in and week out, but I just think that Optic overall has looked so good, right? Like these guys have continued to dominate. We've talked about Dashi. We've given him tons of gas. And then Shotzi, obviously, and, and the whole roster, really. Scalpinelli, everyone's been looking good um, across all the game modes. Uh, their control looks great. They're still on that win streak, as far as I'm concerned, uh, trying to take down the Toronto win streak from Cold War. So I think they're basically guaranteed map three, especially. I didn't know this stat that's, yesterday. That's true. LAG has never captured B point on Gavutu control. Did you know that? <laughs> Never no. once this entire year. They've <laughs> never captured B on offense on Gavutu control. What it's, a mental boon that must be. Someone told me that yesterday, and I was like, are you serious? And then we saw it unfold even with ticks. Like, they get offense. They, all, they they had no faith in them, like, winning B. So they just, like, constantly pushed off of A on that last uh, round five yesterday. And I was just like... I, they haven't on Tuscan either. Wait, EMT says they haven't won B on Tuscan either. That's crazy. Oh, wow. That's not what is their overall uh record in control? Do you know LEGs? Four and seven. Are they they're four and all, seven? They're not bad. They're all right. Yeah, they were on a really bad losing streak uh on it during stage one quals, but then they kind of have been better in the second stage. I don't know, bro. Every time I think Optic Texas, That's I just crazy. think to that hundred thieves, Optic Texas, Tuscan control. You remember that? Where they won back to back all they won three oh and they just won two offenses? Like yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like hearing That's that at crazy. all. That's an insane stat, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just tickled me. I'm not going to lie. That's crazy. <laughs> well, I'm giving Optic the control. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I think everyone's going to get Optic the control. I don't know. If they're expanding map pool, and if they're expanding it in the places that we think they're going to be expanding it, I think it'll be interesting to see what the order of the maps will be. Because if it's going to be, if they do decide to play Desert Siege for the search in Berlin for their hard point from Optic's point of view... Like, if Desert Siege is map five, like, you better close it out in four then, um, I would say. But I don't know. I still feel I still feel pretty solid about Texas. As much as I think there's an opportunity for Los Angeles to come in and, 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 and again, prove themselves as being a, you know, resurged team, mm -hmm. it's going to be difficult, I think, just to think about them uh, beating Optic, even on the extended map pool. Yeah, I mean, you'd need to, and like, team performance that we saw yesterday in their series, right? Like, these guys all had a yeah. 1.10 or above. They are absolutely world starring. I think it's... A lot harder when you're playing against the best competition in the entire league right now. So, I don't know. I I think that's kind of my final thoughts on both these teams. Unless you got anything else, I'm ready to kind of swap it over to predictions. Uh, yeah, go for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go the safe route here. I think LEG could potentially make an upset, knowing that Optic has their map pool trying to expand it or whatever. But I'm gonna go Optic Texas here three one. I'll give LEG a map just on the sole fact that Optic Texas is apparently. Like I said, expanding their map pool. So maybe we'll see some different maps and modes in there. I got Optic Texas still winning the, the control. I think they'll lose game two, depending on what maps they're expanding. Uh, I think yeah. they'll handle business. They'll win this series three to one. I've got an itchy feeling here that Los Angeles girls are going to play really well today. Just okay. with the confidence that they've been able to boost. I think it's going to go five, but I've got Optic winning in five. Okay, I like it. I like it. Old little prediction. I think that's fair to say, too, though. Like, obviously, LAG has looked really good, right, over the last few weeks. And then a big win yesterday versus LA Thieves. And we saw LA Thieves even take when Optic was expanding their map pool, game five, round 11. Um, but it yep. still looked like a dominant series from them. So I think that's a fair take for sure. Excited to watch this match. And that'll kind of transition us into the last match of the day. Um, this one, this one again, bro. is, is uh, like a deciding. All the middle of the pack, I'm not joking, from, like, I would say four, four arguably five, like, uh, top four or five to 12 is like a toss up for me. Like literally we talked about it before. It's like these coin flip series. Like you really don't know what team you're going to get for the day. Uh, what kind of is going to come out and like, I don't know, see, I guess veto wise and what, like how they're going to perform individually. Cause we've seen a lot of inconsistencies from some of these middle of the pack rosters that they look really good one day. Then the next day they look horrible. Um, but yeah. 
Last match of the day will be uh, the New York Subliners versus Minnesota Rocker. And uh, I know you and I are both excited for this, right? We got to finally see if New York is the real deal. <laughs> That's facts. And the thing is, it makes it a very difficult series to predict because we've only seen New York play once mm -hmm. with this new roster. And it was against Paris, who had not figured it out to the level that they did yesterday, obviously. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to get a read. I'm like, A, where are New York's strengths right now? Mm -hmm. And B, what maps are they starting to prefer if they were to be preferring new maps? Because, like, obviously versus Paris, you saw them really do well on Desert Siege on Surge, which was not a map at all that they had really played much leading up into that point. So I think it's going to be difficult to predict this just based on it's hard to say what maps we're going to get outside of, like, the hard vetoes that we get out of Minnesota. So, like, we know for a fact we're not going to see Desert Siege. And we, if they win the control um, coin flip, it'll be a Tuscan control. But... Outside of that, I don't know, man. I think Minnesota's looked a little bit shaky on Berlin, which was at one point their best map and hard point. And I think that this map pool could go a variety of ways, and it's going to be hard to predict against this New York team. I completely agree. And on the side of Minnesota, it's like hard to, I mean, I wonder if they just get rid of Bokaj, but you don't really know, like you said, what New York's strong suits are in any of the respawns, yeah. right? Like these guys are a fresh team. They're brand new. And before they created this roster, they had one of the, they had the worst hard point record in the entire league. So it's like, mm -hmm. when you're going into the vetoes, like, what do you think these guys are good at um, as a team? So I'm curious to see if they just go with like their gut and get rid of Bakaj or if they will square up and play it. I know we saw them play it against the Thieves um, in that reverse sweep they performed. But I think on the New York side, you're worried about like S&D, right? Like you said, we've seen them play yeah, Desert Siege um, and we know Minnesota is going to get rid of that map. So like what, how deep is their strap book um, in S&D? And can Minnesota really take advantage of this new roster and kind of be like, hey, look, like, We've been a team for a long time. We have lots of strats and understand how to play search and destroy. Uh, but then again, on the on the side of New York, I think you have like a little plus. Uh, you've seen the the Tuscan S and D spawns change, so I think that helps yep. because it kind of almost refreshes the map for everyone as a whole. So then they're not so far behind on, on that side of things. And then you see the Bocage uh, S and D. You see the bomb site change as well, so that kind of changes that map up and how it's played. So. I think that's uh, two pluses on the side of New York, where if that if that didn't happen, I would just instantly give Minnesota both the search and destroys. I think a lot of people are thinking that too, by the way. A, a, a lot of the people that are doing the breaking point predictions were going New York, surprisingly so. When I was looking at it this morning, I was like, wow, a lot of people are picking New York. Um, and I think when you look at what the potential map set could be, it's difficult because of the recency, but also, like you mentioned, because of the changes. Mm -hmm. However, that said... I do largely think that even though Tuscan Hardpoint has not been a great map for Minnesota, I don't know if they'll let it through versus this New York team. Because I think largely, if you're Minnesota, you're going to be fine playing that on any of the other three maps. Mm -hmm. So I I'm curious, I think, just to see what Minnesota chooses to do veto-wise here. But if I were to wager, I'd be willing to wager that we're going to see berlin Bakaj Hardpoint and then probably also berlin Bakaj Search, which I don't love that pool for this particular New York team, because a lot of that means that you have to, you have to get a good performance again from Neptune. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's kind of my big linchpin for success for New York here is not necessarily the recent change, but I'm largely looking at what is Neptune going to do in this series? Cause he's going to have to be where there is an advantage. If they can find an advantage through Neptune's point of view, I think New York can take this series, but I don't love the potential of that happening. If we do see Berlin Bakaj. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I'm, I feel like, too, like, we keep talking about it jokingly about some of these rosters, but, like, New York, right? We've, we've only seen them play Paris. Like, this is, like, do-or-die time for them. Like, going into the major, they could have all the confidence in the world. And, like, these are two teams that they need to handle business first with this new roster. Absolutely. Like, they talked about, oh, we finally feel comfortable. Like, they're happy with this new roster. It's like they're playing a Minnesota team who has had crazy struggles. They could have lost every series, and if they don't have that reverse sweep versus LA Thieves, uh, then they're going up against Toronto Ultra, which we just continue to talk about. The woes continue for them, and like they can't figure out hard point. So that'll be the last yeah. match of the day uh, tomorrow. So I don't know. On the New York side of things, you got to come out and handle business. You got to be confident Agreed. in whatever maps and modes you play. Um, and I, I agree with you. I think you need to see a big showing out of Neptune. I think we'll continue to see Hydra Fry. Krim looks very comfortable. Um, and uh, I, th I think the additional Paul has helped them uh, tenfold. So. I can't wait to see what they do. And I, I know I've heard a little bit on the backside of things that apparently they've been playing well in scrims, but I know that only means so That's much because we've talked about how some teams play good in scrims and they can't transition it to these matches. So then again, on the side of Minnesota, like, I don't know, man, you, you lose a series versus this new team, New York, which is a series that you 
must handle. Uh, you're talking mm-hmm. roster changes potentially. And, and after this, Absolutely we spoke are. about it yesterday, like with the Minnesota open now having these amateur teams, um, you know, in the mix and we're going to finally get to see all these guys play on land. Like if, if you don't handle business here, you go into the major flop out here. It's like, all right, now we're, we're really talking like we need to switch something up. Yeah, and for Minnesota, by the way, for what it's worth, you win this match, you're in the upper bracket at oh, is it? event. So yeah, they're they're both they're two and two. New York is one and two. So I'm pretty sure if you win, you're in to the upper bracket if you're Minnesota. So that's that's huge as far as their potential um when it comes to being at your own major and, and wanting to be in the upper bracket obviously so i don't know I, it's it's i don't think there's a lot of weight in that don't <laughs> i don't just said it out loud but like I, this is a very important match is really what i'm getting at in this game of things here so otherwise you're hoping for tiebreakers after that um so i think that there is something to be said about both teams wanting to come out and really give this everything because new york is still in the running as well since they have toronto tomorrow so oh wow so this this match is actually crazy and i didn't even realize how much pull it has on it because you're talking yeah. like i said if new york wins this and uh, minnesota would potentially not be in winners bracket depending on how everything unfolds and then they breakers, could, yep. yeah they could literally go three and two if they close out and beat toronto and then on the minnesota side of things it's like well you have your open it's literally your home God, like you want to be in winner's bracket. You don't want to start in losers. Um, so, wow, that's crazy. This match yeah, is actually going to be nuts. Uh, wow. I don't, I, I don't even know what to... <laughs> I know what I put in on the GG breaking point as far as predictions go, but I just don't know. Like, the Are more I sit here... Now? But yeah, I, I honestly am. Like, I just don't know if I have full faith and like if all the problems with New York are just completely ironed out. Like, we saw them beat a Paris team and yeah, it was impressive, but it was like... They were on literally cloud nine as far as like honeymoon goes. I just don't know how all of their practice has looked throughout the last week or so. Um, and then like, will Minnesota just come out with the fire and just show why they're the better team? Like, and I don't know. That's going to be nuts. Yeah, I think it's going to be a really good series. Uh, well, while you're deliberating, I know where I'm going with this series. Um, I don't feel great about New York and the control. I think there's an easy dub there. And I don't feel great about New York on the potential search and destroy maps. I think this could be done in four, but I'm going to give New York credit because I think this could be 3-2 either way. But I'm still going to go 3-2 Minnesota on this one. Ooh, I like it. I like it. I'm with you a little bit. Like I feel like if it were to go five, I think Minnesota handles business. Um, my problem is I think... I don't know. I, I'm a I'm a firm believer of honeymoon. I'm a firm believer of of like switching up the vibe and kind of getting things rolling. Uh, I think that they did beat Paris, and like you could argue that Paris hasn't looked good, but I think that over the last few weeks, Paris has actually looked solid, and they've taken teams kind of the stretch. So I'm gonna give New York the benefit of the doubt here. They got a new face. They got Paul Lex. He's undefeated in the league. Has yet to lose a series. Uh, I think he's gonna continue to do so. <laughs> and uh i got new york winning this one i got new york winning this one three one i think like i said if it goes five it's a minnesota dub here i think new york has to handle business uh in a one two and four i think they'll close it out i think they will lose the control but i think uh, as far as snd goes i i got new york in this one just because i think uh if, if all of this stuff said and done wasn't like fit or messed up on snd with like the the spawns on tuscan and like the bocage sure, uh, bomb sure. site I would go Minnesota here all day, but I think that plays a big role um, in this series. And it kind of like is like a clean slate for both these teams as far as search and destroy. Like you got to relearn the map. We, we saw the S and D guru, uh, Cole Havoc, even saying it plays the, the map plays a lot differently. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm confident in New York. And if, if they uh, set me astray here, then I'm, I'm going to be upset, but I got a New York win three to one. It's fair. I, I, I mean, there's definitely potential for that to happen. I just, Man, it's tough with this map pool to think that New York is going to win both hard points in the first place, let alone be able to pull two of the three in the two, three, five for me. So I don't know. I just have an inkling of a suspicion that Minnesota is going to look better on the potential map pool that we're going to get. Yeah. Or, or here's another one for you, too. I wonder if you see uh, Minnesota Rocker just start down 0 2. You see New York just come out frying and then they just do their whole old reverse sweep yeah. again. They're just never out of it and then they qualify. Talk, yeah. Dude, talk. I'm not kidding. That is like such a high chance of that happening. I'm not joking. Like, I got a 3 1 win though. here in New York, but I literally could see them easily starting down 0 2 in this series and winning three straight and Major Maniac just goes crazy game five again. And then Minnesota <laughs> starts in winners and like just ISO. I'm not even joking. That. The likeliness of that <laughs> happening, I feel like, is so high. Like, I, I don't know. It's gonna, it's gonna be a good series. But um, I don't know. I'm excited for for Call of Duty today. I think we got some absolute banger games, and I can't wait for the major. Um, follow it up the the following weekend. But if you want to take a few track questions, and we can kind of wrap this episode up. It was a little bit yeah, of a shorter one today, chat. But uh, 
we, you know, the, the, there's not a whole lot to talk about. I think until after the major, we'll really have some juicy episodes as far as it goes um, for for these yeah. roster changes and whatnot. It's gonna be crazy to see what happens, man. I was sitting there telling Alan guys before uh, the show, it's like this is like do or die time for for like the teams from like four to nine. I would say like you really get to Absolutely. see which way these organizations want to go. It's like do do we make the change to to become like over that hump of middle of the pack or do we? Just stay the same and hope we iron things out through the longevity of the year. So it's going to be crazy. Yeah. Man. I think the fact that we didn't get any changes after the second week is pretty evident that we're not going to get any changes till at least after the major, if not maybe even after the pro am. I think for teams like Minnesota in particular, I think you, you start having the conversation to see how likely it is that your academy team could move to the estates. Mm. Um, and then after the pro-am and like if you lose to your challengers team then okay time time to make moves but i don't know i think it's gonna be interesting to see who wants to make moves and i think more importantly when is it immediately after the major or is it going to be after the pro-am are they trying to target some of those players on the top four teams and challengers overall i don't know it'd be interesting yeah i mean on my side of things i feel like you will see changes right after this major i feel like it's it's like a point in the year where you're like you're basically at the middle way point right like the pro-am is kind of like is what it is from my understanding i don't know how public some of this knowledge is but it may be a little an asterisk event because i've heard rumors of single limb so if that were the case uh if it were like a kickoff style event that would oh, definitely be Pro-Am, yeah mean? i heard i heard mm. some rumors about that. i don't know how true that is um i hope that's not the case but uh if it were to be which i i could understand why it would be like that if it was like a kickoff style event where you just throw the the four teams in um i don't know but we, we well, will see that it's supposed to be groups right like they're supposed to play through groups first so if, if it's yeah but if, if, it's if it were groups to to a single limb single bracket limb. yeah that'd be whack kind of in a way i mean it would be better yeah i don't know i don't know i'm i would be okay with it just because you get a chance like i think the whole purpose at least methodically about the event is like you want to see the ams play up against multiple pro teams and you get that by having them in a four-man group yeah so i, I agree I, with I, that I, i'm more excited about the groups than necessarily the bracket the bracket is like all right one of the am teams got through can they how far can they go like yeah <laughs> it's, yeah it's literally a saint peter's story you're just trying to see how far they go <laughs> at this point everyone's a peacock fan right now yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I just, I'm a big fan. I guess it's from a competitive standpoint. I love seeing the double elimination back, but I know how hard it is that's to like true, yeah, get all the true. production out there. Cause like I said, I, I'm a huge fan of the underdog story too. If an AM team came out to to the bracket and makes some crazy run, that's what I'm there for. You know what I mean? I would love to see for it. Real. It'd be sweet. Um, let me see if we got some questions rolling in chat. I don't know if I said it either, but we're going to do some chat questions. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, you guys are watching with us live on Twitch right now, go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll try to answer some of them uh, to the best of our ability. Uh, here's one right off the top. I don't know if you have one next, but uh, Moonslays asks, is Boston a top four team right now? I know you kind of spoke about it a little bit, but do you have them in your top four? I do. Yeah, I do. I, I think after what they were able to showcase versus um, Seattle, Minnesota at the beginning, I was like, okay, these guys can hang. They're they're all in there. And then watch them beat Toronto. I am Yeah, I'm, I'm very firmly in the Boston top four train right now. I like it. I like it. I'm, for me, I'm going to say no. I think they're right on the cusp. I think they're they're literally the fifth best team in the league right now. I think uh, I'm just giving some some heavier weight to to the London guys, and then potentially Toronto or Thieves, depending if they can kind of iron things out. Um, and we'll see how the major goes for them. I just think that uh, I don't know. We haven't seen Boston play all the top teams. We've just seen them fall to to Phase and Optic, and we haven't ever seen them play London or uh, Thieves. We've only seen them play Toronto. So mm. curious to see how it unfolds for them. Here's a good one from Nitram. He asks, "What would be more efficient, changing the roster or changing the roles for LA Thieves?" Do you want to get it or me? <laughs> Do you have an opinion on it yet? I think from an efficiency standpoint, you have to roll swap before you roster swap. Mm -hmm. Just due to the fact that you've got two players that find themselves in very similar positions between Kenny and Draza as far as what they prefer to roll. So uh, in, done into the past as well, you got to keep in mind with those two players, question mark? Did they do that when uh, Draza was? No, that was totally different. I'm, t I'm lying. That was op that was Optic Gaming LA that Draza came into, right? Am I thinking that right? Uh, I Warfare? think... I don't remember exactly, honestly, yeah, on the no, history of I should, it. I, need to, I should know this. <laughs> um, but we've seen that happen before, though, where we've had, like, Kenny during the Modern Warfare year was, like, sub for the beginning of the year. Then he pulled out the M4 with, like, the no attachments and stuff, I want to mm -hmm. say. So, like, we've seen those similar moves be made in the past. So, I, I, I think if you're LA Thieves, you try to go roll swap before you go roster swap. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I'm a firm believer. I think it can swap up. 
uh, the vibe of a team and, and kind of switch everything up. And I think in a game like this too, like the MP40 is literally the best gun in the game. Like it's, I don't even think it's close. So, I mean, the auto is good, mm. but I think like a player of Kenny's skill, I think it would be worthwhile to put him on a sub, see what he can do in a game like this where there's really not like a lot of mistakes that you can make individually as a player. Like you literally just kind of go rogue and pop two pieces and Kenny has the talent to do so. So I'd be curious to see if they would play interest in it and doing the swap. And like I said, I don't, I don't think it would make a crazy big difference just because of the maps we have. Like you don't see a lot of these maps um, be played, but I don't know. I, I think it would be huge getting Kenny comfortable on a sub and maybe you'd see them play more of Bocage hardpoint and open up their map pool a little bit. Yeah, it's just tough because I think that it's more of a stylistic thing that's going wrong for Thieves comparatively to some of the top teams that are out there more than necessarily as a personnel problem. Mm -hmm. That's see, kind of my take. I see someone in chat. Havoc and Draza out. Reunite with Envoy. That'd be interesting. That uh, really would. Reboot? Uh, that team would be good. Like, no joke. Like, I actually... It would be good. I don't think they would do that, but if they were to do it, it, it would be good. It would help their search and destroy and help probably their 2-3-5 modes, which would definitely improve this team tenfold. Mm. Bro, why does it that everyone thinks I look like Maven with hair? Can we get a poll chat on stream to see if that's true? <laughs> I've heard, that a, I've I've heard that a lot. Bro, I've heard so many things in, in my commentary career. Like when I first started casting Overwatch, people were like, is that Tim the Tat Man? Because like apparently when I get like really excited, I have like a very similar Tim Yell voice. Um, and then when I first started casting COD, people were like, when did Courage start casting COD again? Because when I get hyped, I have like this very Courage-esque style apparently. Someone said, I, I hold Maven. I don't hear it or see it at all. I don't, I don't hear it or see it at all. You guys are twisted. I'm about to change your boxing to I hold Maven. <laughs> That's crazy. People are going to see it now that you said it too. Now that you brought it known, like people are going to see the, the Maven in you now. Now I'm looking at you and I'm like, I oh, see Maven. No. That's crazy. I mean, I'll take the compliment, but that's hilarious uh <laughs> <laughs> you guys can go ahead and vote in the poll by the way if you guys are watching what is live uh i'll i'll get it more serious I'm but voting no i'm voting <laughs> no <real quick. laughs> it's path ass so i know you guys touched on this before but what maps are being tested for another control map or do we really know now know any of them are. i'll be honest I, yeah, I don't think anything is being tested as far as control goes um from my understanding they're the only other one would have been Berlin. Apparently, they changed the point or something on that. But I, I know for a fact that none of the pro teams have tested it right now. They would do it in this next period where they're off for a month. Uh, usually, you'll mm -hmm. never see uh, a map be added in the middle of like a major qualifier or right before a major just because it would be impossible to, to kind of do that. Um, so, yeah, that, I think that's realistically the real answer on that one. Yeah, man. We need a fifth map for hardpoint and search as well, right? So... Mm -hmm. I hope that as the major ends, whenever the next season comes out for COD, that there's a map in there that is built to try to fulfill those vacancies right now. Because at the moment, it, it is difficult to go through. Like, it's everything becomes so predictable when you have a team that, like, each team hard vetoes a different map. It's like, well, we know what we're going to get. Like, mm -hmm. there's really no, I don't know. I, I love the little chess game that happens before the matches even start. Yeah. Um, so I, I hope that we get a fifth map for each of the first two modes. And then, of course, we get a third for control. It'd be nice. I agree. I agree. Gavin said, Slack and hold shift casting duo? Yeah, I may have to dabble. I'll be the merc to his maven. <laughs> uh, thoughts on the Warzone? Oh, here's a good one. Go ahead. Yeah, thoughts on the Warzone tournament. We haven't talked about that at all, actually. Yeah. Um. So I don't know exactly how that unfolds. Like, obviously, I played a lot of Warzone. Um. I've heard that some of the Warzone creators can't even be a part of that because of the YouTube contract deal thing where like basically you have to stream on YouTube and you're not allowed, if you're a Twitch partner, you're not allowed to stream on another platform. Um, but mm. I don't know. I, I know the pros are playing in it. It's cool. I think it's just something I think to honestly keep like people involved and something to do. I When, when is it? Is it over the month period where they're off? I'm pretty sure. It's, yeah. So it's, it's at the second week of April. I want to say, um, yeah, the qualifiers happen soon. I don't, I don't have, I don't have it all the way updated. Yeah, but the finals is until the end of April, so it's like over the course of the next three weekends. Like I think it's like April seventh to the ninth or eighth to the tenth is like one of the first qualifiers, and then they've got like a group period that happens like the fourteenth through the seventeenth or something, and then the finals happens the weekend after. I like it though. I mean, I'm a fan of it. I think it's oh something God. like we've seen them do this in the past where they did, uh, I think it was MW year. They had, uh, 
a lot of those war zone events they were kind of like uh off broadcast where you would do like we, we pre-recorded them but like the winning team would uh win like a specific amount of money it's just something to kind of keep the call of duty fans involved with and give something for you guys to watch over the the downtime yeah. between the next major or the next prom event that would be coming up 87 percent, bro come on twist it out <laughs> yeah i hit you with the yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, this okay. Tao's asked a couple of times, "What do you think Phase needs to do to reach the same level as Optic?" I mean, I think you can argue they're they're kind of at the same level right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe the only big kind of opening would be like, do they need to be better at control? Maybe that's the only real opening because hey, the times that they've played, they haven't they haven't won a control versus Optic yet. So, I'll be honest. From my opinion, and like a from from my professional opinion, I guess I think they are at the same level as Optic. I think when you see two elite teams like that go at it back and forth over and over and over, and we'll see it through the entirety of this year, you're gonna see different results every time they play. Like you may see mm -hmm. Phase uh, squeeze out a series three one, especially on a game like Call of Duty Vanguard. Like when there is so much random things that could happen when maps come down to t call of duty is a game of timings. Like you, you could have them play a series 10 times and the series may split be five, five, or it may go seven, three, one favor one day. Um, I think with no trophy systems, um, the maps, That's true. the breaking of walls, how quick it is to get to Hills and slide canceling, it will create for a lot of inconsistency and almost randomness in a way. I think, uh, there is a right way to play this game. And I think that these two teams have the talent and understanding to do so. Um, but I, I think they are on the level of optic. You'll just see a lot of crazy different results uh, when it comes to these guys playing. Like they're two powerhouse rosters. They're the best two teams in the league for a reason. And when they play, one team's gonna win every single time. Obviously, like just gonna yeah. be a battle. That's my take on it. Yeah, no, I think that the, there's a lot to be said about that too. I, I think your take is hitting it on the nose for sure. Yeah, I agree. I like that. I like it. One said, uh, Shurg said Crowder said on his show that their control strategy is about to completely change. I like that. I mean, mm -hmm. we saw it yesterday too. Like, I think Cap tweeted about it. Uh, we saw Hundred Thieves win the control. I was sitting here saying I didn't think it would change too much, but on Gavut, on Tuscan, I don't think it will still. But I think on Gavutu, it will. Like, you see it go all the way to five. LAG's a team who can't capture B, and LAT get outslayed on that map. I actually want to pull up the stats real quick on that because LA Thieves got outslayed like crazy on that map, and they still won it because of the the new tick uh, the tick change. The new tick change. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They won. Every single player on uh, LAG went positive except for Gunless. He dropped a 1.0. You had Draza go negative 11. Kenny went even. Octane went neg 7. Anvo went neg 3. So they got out slayed by 21 kills, and they won the map. I go with your control, which is that's kind of crazy to think, because like you would not see that time before. Like They would get out slayed by 20-plus kills, and then LAG just goes on to win the defense convincingly. Like So I, I'm a fan of it. I'm curious to see kind of what FaZe can do, if they will change up their strategy or like if it... That makes a change for them i think yesterday was like i said was the first true like test you saw of the change i think the biggest thing with the change and we see this excuse me across a couple of challengers teams is that you're more willing to take super high risk plays in order to get an extra tick of progress uh -huh. even if it means you lose a lot of lives making that that play happen like yeah. that was something that stallions um really did a lot on on tuscan control before the tick change they were playing super risky and when they would lose control it was because they just did not have the lies but they would find so much progress uh on that b zone on tuscan where a lot of teams did not have an answer to it so yeah and then you when the tick change happened for playoffs they started winning a lot more of their controls so i think you're going to start seeing teams play a little, a little bit more risky in order to try to get an extra stack for one extra tick or so um just to play that math game even though the lives at that point you know may be super costly mm -hmm. i like it i like it uh gab in the chat asked with the league being so competitive in terms of talent on every roster how much do you think falls on the coach to be able to harness their roster's skills and potential versus the player's ability to adapt to new systems and based Good on the question. teammates they have? Ooh, That's I like it. Question. I like it. That's a very in-depth question. Uh, do you want to hit it or me? Go for it. Yeah. So the reason that I love this question is because as much as coaches have been more assimilated into their importance to the league, I think the thing that a lot of people miss out on is the culture of the team and really just the organization at large. Like, this is a conversation that has been having um, a lot of different topics when it comes to, like, watching over things in Valorant with how fast some of these teams are willing to make changes. And I think you could even look back to, like, Thieves last year. Like, if you're part of that system where you're making changes on a almost weekly basis, mm -hmm. 
as a player, you never feel confident in what's happening. Like you probably don't feel the confidence to try to adjust or adapt because you think your individual performance is going to be the only merit that is credited towards if you're playing or not. So I think being able to establish a culture of being okay to make mistakes and trying things is super, super unappreciated. And when it comes to what a coach has um, the ability to do from that perspective. So uh, I think that coaches is it's more than just recognizing your team and being able to like coach them on certain things that they want to see on the map. But I think also just organizationally, you have to be able to build a culture where it's okay to fail, uh, especially in these, you know, opening qualifier stages. Cause really at the end of it, everyone's playing for championships. That's mm -hmm. what everyone's playing for. So if you get too lost in the fact that we lost this matchup this week versus this one team once, that's not a healthy culture. So I think good coaches are not just being able to direct their players correctly, but I think they also are able to help stage a good culture. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you 100%. I think it's just like one of those things too. I, I don't like seeing stuff like, this makes me think of the point of like everyone saying like, oh, fire J-Cap, J-Cap needs to go, blah, 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 because like the LA Thieves struggles. And to answer your question, I think the top part, you said how much of it falls on the coach. I would say, my opinion, it's like an 80 20 or a 90 10, like where it's 80 or 20 or 80 or 90 percent all on the team and 10 to 20 percent maybe on the coach, right? Like, realistically, uh, in practice and when you're practicing every day, like say you are terrible at a P1 or a P2 hard point and you just can't figure it out, maybe the coach goes back, watches VOD, figures out what's going wrong, helps tweak the setups and get a better right. understanding of what's going wrong. But realistically, in Call of Duty right now, we don't have a coach that can talk while we're playing. So the only thing he can do is in practice be like, yo, this is what we need to do. We need to be doing this better and, and uh, allow it to, it'll help us play the map smoother. But when the match starts, he has no control of what happens. It's all on the guys that they've worked on every single day. They've practiced, you know, five to eight hours every single day and went over. So it's only like, I don't know, a little bit on the coach. Um, I, I, you know, that's stuff that we'll never get to see because players and, and teams don't stream uh, scrims. But I don't know. I, I don't think you can ever blame a coach unless stuff's going on internally and players are stating like, hey, my coach doesn't help us or my coach isn't doing it's things doing to anything. improve us yeah. or whatever. But like realistically, like, or I saw like S&D struggles continue for the Thieves. It's like J-Cap can tell them a, a strat or they can come up with good strats or take strats that other teams do, but mid-round adjustments and calls that players make, that has nothing on the coach. Like, Cap's not in their ear like, all right, you guys are in a 2v2, plant A, and one of you watch this and watch that. That's not how right, it works. Sure. It's like, so, yeah. I don't know. I see a lot of people being like, oh, Cap's the reason they're losing. They need a new coaching staff, blah, 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 blah. And that's just like, honestly, that's just dumb. Like, Cap's a former yeah, player. He's won multiple world championships, played at the highest level. He's bringing good input to the team. He can't control what the team does, though, from that point on. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think when you start to, you know, as a audience member or just as somebody who is a fan and you start to dig into, oh, the coach is the problem now all of a sudden, like we don't have any tangible information that could lead you to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say, though, I do think the coach is a very important part of establishing what the culture is going to be. So um, I think there's something to be said with that. And Hello? Ryan, are we live still? You can unmute your mic. I don't care. <laughs> Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I was like, wait, I didn't know if I was going off. All right, we're still good. We're still good. It's not working. Like, it, it very much should, could just be an organizational, more managerial problem. You back, um, Alan? Hello? Uh, you, yeah, you cut out for like, I don't know, 45 seconds. I thought I got booted what? offline. Uh, thought my house I was. was... On like, dude, I was on like a great little screen, a little, uh, <laughs> little chat right there. I like came in right after you stopped talking and I was like, good to go. What happened? Yo, dude, I literally was like, Bro. something just cut out. I thought my internet went off. And then I go, Ryan, are we so good? We still live. He goes, I see my mouse moving on the right. I'm like, oh, we're so good. And you just cut out the whole time. Well, what did you hear? I was, I was making some good points. I'll be honest. I didn't hear anything. You cut well, out from the awkward. right when you brought up your point, you cut out, and we didn't hear a single thing you said. And I thought I just <laughs> got hit tough. on left. Yeah, this is a put I a lin in the chat. It's just... all on Ben. 
<laughs> what I was saying was, I, I, as much as, you know, because we heard this from Havoc yesterday, is like he thinks Mayhem is like the best coach he's ever had. And we're never going to know the reasons why certain certain coaches are better or worse than others. So I, I think it's def- difficult for us as outsiders to put a lot of weight on the coaches themselves. But I do think that coaches are important um, to the overall culture of the team itself. Completely agree with you 100%. That's some, <laughs> what, <laughs> the short version of what I just got done saying <laughs> to myself. <laughs> Dude, I literally thought I got nuked offline. I was like, well, I guess the show will end there. I was like, I don't know. I didn't know what happened. That's funny. That's hilarious. Oh, man. Well, I don't I don't know. You want to take any more questions? I don't know if there's any more. You kind of want to call it there. It doesn't matter to me. Either one. Uh, I'm good. Yeah, I'll just hit it one more time. If you're someone who's around the Minneapolis area or wants to go to the major and has the ability of going to the major, or if you're already going to the major and would like an upgrade on your tickets, I have a four day VIP pass that I I'm, I need to give away. I'm gonna I'm gonna link the tweet that I posted in the chat. Go to it. Leave me a comment on why you should get a VIP pass if you're going to Minnesota. I'll be picking the the winner of that later tonight. But you have to be going. I picked somebody yesterday, and he was like, yeah, I'm not going, though. So <laughs> why why would you enter? Why would you do that? That's stupid. You maybe look silly in front of a bunch of people. So if you are going to Minnesota and would like to get an upgrade, or if you're somebody who wants to go, um, I've got a VIP pass uh, that I need to give away. So Love it. Love it. Love it. Well, chat, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. Um, if you guys are watching with us live on Twitch, we really do appreciate you guys. We stream every single day. If you guys are just tuning in, first time watching First Blood, uh, it's a podcast Alan and I started. Uh, we just basically a CDL pre-show, and we break down some Call of Duty plays um, here and there. Some exciting times for us. We appreciate all the support. We've started to get a lot more viewers live with us, and you guys have been showing love over on the YouTube. So thank you guys so much. I think this was our, what was this, seven, eighth, eighth episode today? So. We're going on number uh, yeah. nine tomorrow, so this will be the third week we've uh, done it. So we appreciate you guys. Like I said, whether you're watching live on Twitch with us, make sure to follow the stream um, and follow us both on our social medias. Uh, our handles are both under our little cam boxes right there. Mods, if you guys can put them in the chat, we tweet out every time before we go live, and you guys can kind of tune in and hang out with us. Um, so, yeah, some crazy matches going on tomorrow. We'll be live again, um, and if you guys are watching over on YouTube, subscribe to the channel and uh, comment down below if you guys would like to see any players specifically come on the show. We're going to try and get... Uh, more Do players that. engage and whatnot. It's super fun to have their conversation and kind of viewpoint on Call of Duty um, as well. And I know you guys really like it. So we appreciate you guys. Love you guys. And we will see you guys tomorrow at 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. It was an amazing show to get today. And uh, until the next one, catch you guys later. Peace.